If you've got a soft or spongy brake lever or just unresponsive brakes, those problems can often be solved by bleeding the system. Plus, purging your brakes is part of regular maintenance. So today on Revzilla, we will show you how to flush and bleed your hydraulic brake system. Let's open up the shop manual. All right, we're doing things a little different today. I am going to show you how to bleed your brakes, but we're gonna do it from a new perspective, one that puts you at the controls so you'll see exactly what it looks like when you do the procedure yourself. It's, uh, it's pretty simple, we just gotta take the camera and I just gotta sort of insert it in my skull here. Okay, so brake fluid. It's the stuff that is in your master cylinder reservoir. It is what transfers pressure down through the brake line to the pistons at the back of the caliper and slows you down. Like all other fluids in your motorcycle, it does go bad with time. Brake fluid is hygroscopic, and what that means is it will pull moisture out of the air and into the fluid. And water in brake fluid is not good. Number one, it is boilable. Is that even a word? I don't know. It lowers the boiling point of the fluid, which is not good because the brake system has to get very hot. And if it boils, it vaporizes and it makes it compressible. Not a good thing for a brake system. Second, water in your brake fluid is corrosive. So it is important that it be replaced. And if you get air in the system, that is bad because air is compressible. That is what leads primarily to a spongy soft lever or a spongy pedal down there. For reference, I've got some brake fluid samples over here. On the vial on the left, we've got clear, fresh, bright yellow fluid. That is what you want. And then vial on the right here is the old gross stuff. I mean, it gets dark. It actually gets like sediments in it. This is bad news. This is not what you want in your system, which is why most manuals will recommend replacing your brake fluid every two years. And to do it, you don't actually need that many items. This is it. This is what it takes to bleed your brakes, folks. Nothing expensive. We'll start off with some hose here. This is just 3 16 ID vinyl hose. Get it at any hardware store for pretty cheap. I would recommend getting more of it than you think you need. Uh, we will use this to transfer the fluid out of the caliper and into a receptacle. We've got a wrench here that'll go on the bleeder valve on the caliper screwdriver to remove your reservoir cap and of course brake fluid likely it will be dot4 that is what most motorcycles use these days but it will definitely be listed on the lid of your reservoir it is always printed there for reference so that is an easy place to check if you're not sure but again most likely going to be deet4 deet4 deet is what i've got in my bug spray up here which is missing all right we're not going to talk about bug spray of course, if we're getting rid of the old brake fluid, you're gonna need a receptacle to drain it into, for which I have these two options here that I retrieved out of the recycling bin this morning. I have an excessively large milk jug, and then I have an empty beer can. Either of these will work. I prefer a sealable jug like this, since you are going to need to dispose of it. That way you can close it up. And finally, you're gonna to wanna to have plenty of paper towels and rags, because of course we are working on our motorcycle, and you always want that sort of stuff around. All right, so before we begin, there are two things, two pieces of advice I wanna point out. First and foremost, brake fluid is nasty stuff. It's not like super poisonous, it's not gonna melt your skin if you get it on you. But it is a little bit corrosive, so you don't wanna get it on your tank, on your paint, or any of those painted surfaces. Uh, and typically when I'm working with brake fluid, I'll take one of those terry cloth rags, I will soak it, I will wring it out so that I have a moist rag that I can use to immediately wipe any drips or spills off of the paint. Second, general recommendation, is that when you're bleeding your brakes, you start from the farthest point and work your way back to the master cylinder. So if you've got a bike that has a dual disc front brake like this, you would start on the left side, bleed it up, and then you would do the right side and bleed it up. And if you've got a radial master cylinder, it most likely has a bleeder valve on the master cylinder itself, you would do that last. All right, with all that covered, let's dive in. First thing you do is just remove this little dust cover off of the bleeder valve that's just there to keep it clean. Then go ahead and put your wrench over it. I'm using a, a ratcheting wrench, so I'm gonna need to flip it back and forth, but if you just have a box end wrench, it's nice because you can literally just open it and close it and it stays there on its own. I would not recommend using the open end of the wrench because it's gonna wanna fall off. Speaking of falling off, you gotta press your hose on and it is 3 16th ID, which is going to be a very snug fit. And that is by design because you don't want it to fall off and you don't want it to leak fluid as you're bleeding. And I've got a pretty generous length here. This is, I think, two feet of hose, uh, and that is on purpose. What I like to do is loop the hose up like this so that as you're bleeding, you get a column of fluid. That does a couple of things for you. First, it makes it really easy to spot the air bubbles, which you're trying to purge out of the system. It also makes it easier to spot the new fluid, which will be lighter in color than the old fluid as it comes out. Additionally, 
If you uh, screw up the order of operations as you're bleeding here and accidentally release the master cylinder lever with the bleeder still open, it's gonna wanna pull some fluid back in. And if you've got it looped and you've got a column of fluid, it'll pull fluid back in versus if you had it like this and all the fluid drains, it would pull air back in. So hot tip to save yourself some trouble, make your life a little easier, make sure you loop this guy up. Other end of the hose, obviously it needs to go into one of your two receptacles here. And I've got two options for you. If you're gonna use a soda can or a beer can, you can kind of just turn that tab and run the hose through it and that'll help keep it stationary. I don't necessarily like to use a can unless I have to because then you've just got this open receptacle full of nasty fluid to deal with. So I will usually use a plastic bottle and it will often not be a full gallon. Use like a little water bottle and then the trick I like to do is basically cut an X in the bottle that you push the hose through. So that holds it secure, it doesn't wanna pull out. And when you're done, you can basically put a piece of duct tape over that and you've got a sealed container to hold your brake fluid in. Uh, I should have run it behind the line here so that we can get that column we were talking about. You guys will also notice that I'm working on the right caliper instead of the left, which is uh, going against the recommendation I gave you about which side to start on. But I'm doing that because uh, Number one, it's easier to see what we're gonna be working on, which is the caliper and the master cylinder. And number two, and I just realized this, so I'm not gonna give myself credit for it, this actually has a bridge hose. <laughs> so technically, this is uh, farther away from the master cylinder because the hose goes down to the left and then bridges over to the right. So I made a mistake, but technically I'm right, so we're just gonna roll with it. Now we're going to move up to the master cylinder, grab your screwdriver and your paper towels and your rags. And before we open this sucker up, we are going to safeguard against drippage by putting some paper dowels down. And this is to uh, just make sure that if we make a mess, that at least there is something in the way to protect the paint. To remove the master cylinder reservoir cap, it's just two screws. And while I know they look like Phillips, if you were riding a Japanese bike, it is most likely a JIS. That is a Japanese industrial standard. It looks the same. I swear it's got a slightly different contour. And I only bring that up because these two fasteners are a common pain point when it comes to bleeding your brakes. They don't get removed very often, and since they face up, you get moisture collecting there, you've got a steel bolt and an aluminum housing, you've got dissimilar metals, which leads to oxidation. All that is to say, these are very commonly rusted and very commonly easy to strip out. Take a look at that, and if it's rusty, go ahead and uh, apply some tri-flow or penetrating oil to the top of those and just let them soak in. That'll help kind of loosen it up, and then, Use the correct screwdriver. If you don't have a JIS and you have a Japanese motorcycle, I would certainly recommend investing in one of these. They really do grip the JIS better. And you can tell that it's a JIS because there's a little dot at the crux, at the cruciform right there. They punch a dot in it to help you identify it. But in any case, uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove the screws. And we're really just doing this right now to check the fluid level because we need to have a full reservoir before we start bleeding. We're just pulling the master cylinder cover off here and you've got the cover and then this little plastic spacer and this little rubber seal and this stuff's all wet and gross. So see, see the drip. That's why we've got the paper towel down, folks. We could top it off, but that's enough to begin the process. And when I bleed, I actually put the cover back on rather than leaving it off because some master cylinders, when you pump the lever, will kind of like squirt some back out uh, and that'll make more of a mess. So if you leave the cover on, it'll prevent that from happening. Now, the master cylinder is just a pump, and we're gonna use it to pump all the old fluid with its air bubbles out of the system via the caliper. So the first thing you need to do is pressurize the system. So pull the brake lever a few times and keep it pulled in. That is pressurizing the whole system. Now move down to the caliper and take your wrench, and you're just gonna crack the bleeder bolt open about a quarter of a turn. And there you go, you see fluid and our first little air bubble coming off. Brake lever is still pulled in. The bleeder valve is open. Go ahead and close the bleeder valve and then release the brake lever. And that's the process. What we're gonna do is pump to pressurize, open to move fluid, close, and release. That is literally the process. And other than stopping every once in a while to make sure that the reservoir is still full of fluid, that's all you're gonna do until you see all the air bubbles stop moving through that hose and you see fresh fluid coming through. 
Now, one way to save your time and something some people prefer to do when they're bleeding the brakes is to actually draw off all this old fluid before they start so you're not just pumping the old fluid out. So if you've got a syringe or a turkey baster, you can always suck that fluid out or even sop it up with a paper towel. This stuff doesn't look too bad, so I don't have any problem pushing it through the system, but that is a step you can take if you don't want to just be cycling old gross brake fluid. Also, hot tip here, whenever I'm working with these bottles, I punch two holes in the foil. I don't actually pull the whole foil off. Um, one is to pour the fluid out, one is to allow air in, and that basically just makes it a lot easier to pour with control so you don't have to kind of splash the whole thing open. If you do make the mistake of letting the reservoir run dry and pull air into it, it's not a big deal, it's not the end of the world, but it is going to take you much longer to bleed the system. You basically just have to add fluid to the reservoir and start pumping over and know that there's going to be quite a lot of clots of air bubbles that you're going to have to work your way down. So the right caliper here is well bled. You can see we've got fluid all the way up here. There's no air bubbles and I haven't seen any in a couple of cycles. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the left side of the bike. Uh, you do run the risk of spilling some fluid as you release the hose here. So if you pull it down below the height of the caliper, so we're, we're eliminating that loop, then as soon as you crack it, it'll all flow down into the bottle. And again, we are trying to eliminate drips. We're trying to eliminate spills with brake fluid because it's just not very nice stuff. It's a little harder when you're bleeding the opposite side caliper because you have to reach across the bike, but I will use my left hand to pull the lever and then my right hand to open the valve. So I'm pumping with the left, opening and closing the valve with the right, and no air bubbles on this side, so this ought to be a quick bleed. With both calipers bred, <laughs> With both calipers bled, go ahead and check the master cylinder one last time. Make sure the reservoir is toward the upper line. You got the little window here. So this one is nice and full. You'll go ahead and button it up, tighten those bolts down. And as a last step, what I will do is I will take a wet rag and I will wipe everything down. So there's always a little bit of residue on the bleeder valve there. I will wipe that off so that stuff doesn't linger. Same thing on the other side. You can see that it's wet from the fluid, so just wipe it off, and if you ended up spilling some, if you got it down the caliper or whatever, you can always just use a spray bottle, keep the rag underneath, and just spray it off with water to just kind of flush that brake fluid off. Before you wipe off the master cylinder, make sure that these screws are snugged down. You don't want to get any moisture in there with your wet rag. And some people will probably comment, they'll be like, why aren't you using a check valve? Why aren't you using a midi-vac or a vacuum-operated bleeder? Obviously you can. I think those are a little overkill for motorcycles because it's such a small reservoir. You run the risk of drawing all the fluid out and then sucking air like we talked about. And uh, honestly, it's not hard to do with 75 cents of vinyl hose from the hardware store. So like you can introduce more technology and more devices if you want, but I'm showing you guys the really simple, affordable way to do it. Uh, so yeah, cover is back on. We can pull these rags away and then again, Use your moist towel, just kind of wipe all the residue off just to make sure everything is clean and there is no residual brake fluid. And that's it, front brakes are done. And when it comes to the rear brakes, the procedure is exactly the same, except instead of pulling on the lever, you're just gonna be pushing on the pedal. But yeah, it's the same procedure. You get the bleeder valve back there on the caliper and then you get the reservoir tucked up in here and the same thing, you can keep an eye on the reservoir fluid, make sure it doesn't drop down. You would pump, you would open to bleed, you would close and then you would release. If you're wondering about doing this on a bike with ABS versus without ABS, honestly, there isn't much of a difference. The only thing is that you're going to be bleeding the system for a little bit longer because ABS bikes have more plumbing and therefore more fluid to push out of the system. All right, those are the steps and what it looks like to bleed your motorcycle's brakes from my perspective. Kind of took you guys along for the ride on the procedure there, which I thought was pretty cool. Keen to hear what you thought about it. So please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.